So I'm so excited. Tonight is, again, speaking about the activating of the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so God is calling us that in the new covenant, Jesus said, I will not leave you as an orphan, but I will send you the Holy Spirit, and he will be the spirit of truth in you, and he will lead and guide you into all truth. And so he'll tell you when you go left, no right. And, uh, and then also he's your counselor, he's your comforter, he's your helper, and that he's your intercessor, the word of God says, and he intercedes for you and I personally for the will of God in our life. He is the one that will tell us what is yet to come in our life and what he has for us. He will tell us what God has freely given to us. The Bible says, uh, uh, Jesus was saying in the gospel, that out of the innermost parts of your being or belly will flow rivers of living waters. Not just one river, but multitudes of rivers that will flow. And that is the promised Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is wanting now in the new covenant to be flowing out of you and all the different gifts of the Spirit as we go forth. Hallelujah. He also said that uh, the fruit of the Spirit, that now we're not under the old covenant. We've died to that, but now we belong to Christ, married to the word of God, bearing fruit unto God. That is the Holy Ghost fruit because we're not led uh, uh, by the law, but now we are led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. And then he said that we have the gifts of the Spirit in us, and those gifts need to be acknowledged in our lives. And so as, uh, as I'm teaching about the gifts of the Holy Ghost, that first of all, Paul says, I don't want you to be ignorant when it comes concerning the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, that word we've talked about, ignorant, meant there to ignore them, to uh, not uh, uh, think about them, not experience them, be totally uninvolved, be indifferent about them. They're there, but you put them to the side, and you live your life as though you don't have them, you don't value them. And so I thought about what would be the positive way, way to say this. That, uh, that I get involved with them, that I find out how they function in my life, that I meditate on them, that I allow myself to discover them and expect them to move in my life. And so we read in the scripture that it says that we are to pursue love in 1 Corinthians, talks about it, I think it's 14, and we have the love of God that was shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost that unconditional love, and that we're to earnestly desire spiritual gifts. Well, that word earnestly desire means to be passionate about them, to want, strongly wanting them to operate in our life, to have a strong desire. It means to boil over with passion as you are seeking them. Praise God. And so... I thought about this uh, in the word, uh, the scripture that says that God adds witness to us. Remember I say the rivers are flowing out of us when we allow them to flow out of us and that it says this, that he validates them. That's Hebrews 2.4. He validates uh, the, the ministry as we go forth, he's validating it through what? Through signs, astonishing wonders, all powerful miracles, all kinds of powerful miracles, and the gift by the gifts of the Holy Spirit as he distributes as he desires. Oh, my goodness. So God wants to validate us as we go forth in our day. And I pray this. This has just literally changed my whole life. When I was living in Wisconsin, I was involved in soul winning. And so there you had your script and that you went out and you knocked on doors. And I was pretty well known in Janesville uh, that I was that. I ran the ministry itself. 
and uh, and then you have your script and you knock on doors and you want to know, do you know where you'll go if you died today and you have all the things you're to say and then you frighten them into getting <laughs> born again, okay? Anyway, when I left Wisconsin, God said, you will never do that again. And I haven't done that again. Now, as I have been praying, and every day I pray about the Holy Spirit, I talk to the Father about the Holy Spirit, I say divine connections for your purpose. Father God, as I go about my day, bring people into my life that you want to bring into my life that needs the ministry of you, that maybe needs to get born again or, or spirit-filled or needs healing or miracles. I surrender I say, yes, Lord. So I pray that. And I'm just seeing miracles all the time. And so anyway, uh, this happened uh, the other night. Uh, we were out for dinner, and the waitress came, and I recognized her. And I have my card that I give out that has the salvation prayer on it. I call it my tool that I carry with me. So when that moment comes, I have it there and talk to them about praying the prayer. Sometimes I pray it with them, but sometimes I feel led to give it to them. And uh, anyway, it's so interesting. She came by and I said, well, did you pray that prayer? We talked a month ago about it. And she said, she pulled out her card, her tablet, and she says, here it is. I got it here. I haven't had time to pray it yet. So I said, well, you need to put it by your bed stand tonight. And when you go to bed, you pray at night, don't you? Yes, I do. Pray the prayer. And so anyway, she came back to the table, and I said, okay, how would you like it if I prayed the prayer right now? Oh, yes, she said. I would love that. And so I prayed the prayer, had her repeat it back to me, and the presence and the anointing of God just fell all over us as we prayed. And so and it was and so it was so neat because she goes, I got goosebumps all over me. And I go, No, that's the anointing. And so she keep coming back to her table and say, I still got these goosebumps. <laughs> she got born again. And when I look over the, the situation as these, this is happening so much in my life is that I realize several things. I don't even know it's happening when it's happening because you're naturally spiritual. That God now just intervenes right there, fills my mouth, what I need to say, accomplishes what needs to happen through me. And then I'm amazed at what he just did. I don't have to have my script, because he has a script. And the word says, don't think about what you're going to say, because at the moment, he will fill our mouth with what we need to say. So praise God. These are miracles. So on, on um, Sunday, we went out. One couple from California wanted us to take them out. Uh, I didn't know them, but they wanted to have time with us, so we said yes. We had time with them, and so in the middle of the conversation and everything, she says that she has uh, MS. Well, and the power and the power of God just came on us. I said, you know, do you want us to lay hands and pray over you? You know, the Bible says you will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. She said yes. I could feel the power, sense the power of God going up from my hands as I touched her. I knew that she was instantly healed of that. That was gone. Her husband says, well, I just got diagnosed with leukemia. Again, do you believe if we pray? Yes. And so, again, you felt the power just uh, going out from our hands. And as I touched him, I knew he was instantly healed of leukemia. It was really interesting because we didn't know that they had this situation going on in their lives. And so we, in the conversation, how the Holy Spirit is, we began to share about miracle healings and healings in our own life. Dr. Tom had just been miraculously healed 
in his ears, and now he has a 100% healing. So we were talking about that, and I laid hands on his ears. It was God, and the power of God in my hands brought, brought total restoration to his hearing. And so as we're giving all these testimonies, they were prepared to have faith that when we prayed, they would be healed. See, Jesus always asked them, do you have faith? And do you believe? And so it's really important that the person believes also. Um, last evening, we were doing a class about wealth, teaching people about coming into the great wealth. I mean, the word of God tells us it's already done. The word tells us in, uh, 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 was it Ecclesiastics, that, I think it's chapter 2, that those that please the Lord, see if you have faith, you please God, that he gives you wisdom and knowledge and happiness. But to the sinner, he gives the task of gathering the wealth or the riches and hands it over to you that pleases the Lord. Well, anyway as we were teaching about, that the wealth is already in the kingdom of God for you. It's already been marked and laid up for you, and that you need to just claim that it's already there and receive it. Say, yes, I receive that wealth that a sinner is collecting for me. I say it's already there, and I receive it. Hallelujah. It's there to build the kingdom and also to share in your own life. And so we said to them, the class was over, and we said, now we want to lay hands on you, and we want to impart to you the anointing for great wealth. For freely we receive, we can freely give. And so we told them that, and to break that spirit of poverty off of them, and also to lay hands on them and pray for them to get free from legalism and religion, to die to it and come into the revelation of grace. Well, as we began to lay hands on them, the power of God came upon us. You could feel the power leaving your hands and going into them. There were moments we had to stop because the power was so strong to gather ourselves to continue on. They received supernatural miracles last night. Hallelujah. So, God wants us to move out in these miracles that he's already put in us. The gifts of the Holy Spirit now are there to now bring people out of the prisons that the enemy has them in or even the prisons you are in. Lay hand on yourself. There's miracles in your hands, healing power. Hallelujah. Well, we're, today we're going to talk about the power of the, the gifts of speech, okay? The powers of, of the gifts of speech. And so we see here there are the gifts of tongues, and uh, then there is also the gift of interpretation and prophecy. We will talk about tonight about tongues and interpretation. And so 1 Corinthians 12.10 says this, to another diver's kind, that means a different kinds of tongues, uh, to another, the interpretation of tongues. Well, when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we receive a prayer language. And so that's, there's three different types of tongues. This is our prayer language. This is where our spirit is praying to God. It's praying mysteries to the Father God. And uh, it, it is, edifies us. The Bible says it edifies us. What does the tongue do? It, it edifies means to build up, to, uh, to uplift, to instruct uh, and uh, so anyway, in our own lives, when we have got came into a situation, we don't know uh, the answer. We, we feel like we're, we're in, in a crossroad, but we don't know which way to go, or we don't know. We need the instruction of the Holy Ghost. Or maybe there's a stronghold there, and we need to break through it, all right? I remember when my son Scott had his eyes 
eye, and I've talked about it many times, that his eye uh, was hit by a hard ball, it was bleeding, it was dying, did not know how bad it was, because the doctor didn't tell us, but we kept speaking the word of God over him, but as he would scream out in pain, we, what did we do? We just start praying in the Holy Ghost. We prayed all night long in the Holy Ghost. Well, the next morning, the Lord gave us instruction of what to do, and his eye was totally healed. I know building Living Word Bible Church, there were times we didn't know what to do. We were at the end. It didn't look like the church was going to happen. And Dr. Tom would say, well, let's go on a fast. Well, fasting and prayer, right, uh, 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 detoxes us from the doubt and unbelief, but also breaks those strongholds. We're not changing God, we're changing ourselves and a circumstance that the enemy has put in our life. And so as we were doing that, guess what would happen? Well, then we would get an instruction as we were praying in the Holy Ghost. That's our prayer language. You can pray in the Holy Ghost anytime you want to. And so I find in my life, I pray in the Holy Ghost around the house, whatever I'm doing. If I'm watching a movie or a TV show or whatever, I just pray in the Holy Ghost. Why waste the time? Hallelujah. Pray in the Holy Ghost because it builds me up in my old, most holy faith. It edifies me. It instructs me. It uplifts me. It's praying mysteries to Father God. Hallelujah. So let's read the scriptures here that talk about it, right? 1 Corinthians 14, 2 says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. 1 Corinthians 14, 4 says, He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. And then Jude says, oh, but you, beloved, building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. And then we know that Paul said, 1 Corinthians 14, 18, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than you all. So praying in the tongues brings miracles. I remember we were, uh, Dr. Tom, we were in a different, we were in another church helping that church he was a youth pastor but he was the only one there during the week and so he just went ahead and built all the departments and did all the work he was really acting like he was the associate pastor because dr tom is serving god and wants the advancement of the kingdom of god so when the pastor came over he said well let's make you the associate pastor and so he was so excited, but then a new person came into the church, and so the pastor changed his mind and said, no, we're not considering you, we're considering this person. Well, our first feeling was, oh my goodness, you know, the elders and the, and the leaders of the church, they're going to ask us, why are they not considering you, and we could cause harm to the church. And we don't want to ever do anything that would ever harm the house of the Lord. So we came up with a plan that when they asked us, which they did, we say, no, we're just happy where we're at. So we didn't cause any trouble within the church. Well, they hired this person. Within two days, they, they let him go. But in the middle of the whole situation before they hired him, Dr. Tom had a dream. Word of knowledge, going, you need to go on a 40-day fast. He woke up and said, God told me I need to fast for 40 days. Well, he hadn't done that before, you know, that long of a fast. And so I just said, well, you better obey God. So he went on the fast, okay. And, and, and anyway, it was because he was a first-generation Christian. The enemy was, was going to steal his destiny. God, he didn't know why he was fasting, but within the middle, by the middle of the fast, uh, this guy didn't work out, and he got hired for the job. Dr. Tom did, and took the job because the Holy Spirit knew 
his heart and how we didn't want to hurt the church, but the Holy Spirit knew that was his job. He was already doing it, and so God broke the Holy Spirit then through the fasting and praying, and the Holy Spirit broke those strongholds of the enemy that was trying to keep him in prison and not fulfill his destiny or steal his destiny from him. Praise God. God is so good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So God will lead us. Hallelujah. Then the second part of the prayer language is this is the Holy Spirit. This is when you're in a country or even here and God brings somebody into your life that does not speak your language. But then the Holy Spirit will fill your mouth with the language that they know and so that they're able to get born again, get spirit filled, or whatever healing, whatever they need, you 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 speaking a language you never were taught. And we see that on the day of Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, you know, the rushing wind and the, and the fire over their heads and that, and then the noise that was made, the word of God said, that the multitudes came running on the day of Pentecost. It was all these people from all different countries that had come for the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem. They came, and it said they were confused because they heard them speaking in their language, a language that they never were taught. And 3,000 got saved that day. You might be in a country and it, you don't know that language and you're supposed to get up and speak a message to the people, the congregation, but your interpreter didn't show up. The Holy Ghost will preach the word through you in a language you were never taught. Hallelujah. So that is that way. Then the third one is the assembly tongue. That is, and I move in that, all right? And that needs to have an interpretation with it. And so what happens with me during ministry time or even before I come up to minister in the Holy Ghost, I will, I will feel this bubbling up inside of me of, on, uh, of the language of the Holy Spirit. And I will hear the sounds of it in my, in my own head. I always say Jesus is Lord because I want to be sure it is the Lord that wants to speak through me. And the Bible says only the Holy Spirit can say Jesus is Lord. Now I'm in total control of it. And that's what is real important that I understand that. I have a freedom. I can speak it out or not speak it out. I choose to speak it out by faith. I believe it's the Lord and the, and the assembly tongue goes forth by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And then I believe that I have the interpretation. And so then I interpret what God has given me. Now, that doesn't always happen. I move in word of knowledge. I, I move in the different gifts of the Holy Spirit and the healing and the miracles of God and that. But, and I move in the prophetic. But there are times when it is, God wants me to, to speak out in the assembly tongue. All right? And so he's in charge, right? So let's look at the scripture about it. It says, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 5, I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesy. For he who prophesies is greater than he that speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. That means instruction, building up, coming into what God has for the church. And so I find in my own life, I believe it says that he should interpret. So I believe if I'm speaking in tongues in the assembly, I also will interpret it. Now I've heard others that they have, they pray, they speak in tongues and somebody else, they know that is there that will interpret the tongues that they just spoke out. But if that person's not there, the word says this, okay? Uh, 13 says, okay, I just, just read these, first, these scriptures. Therefore, let him who speaks in tongues praise that he may interpret. Remember? 
pray that he may interpret. Hallelujah. But anyone who speaks in tongues, this is 28, 27, 28, uh, let there be two or even most three, and each in turn, and let one interpret. But if there's no interpreter, let him keep silent in the church. Let him speak to himself and to God. So if there's not an interpreter of the, of the, the, the assembly tongue, just talk it to God and keep silent in the church. Now, it's really important here. The word of God says, know them that labor among you. That's First Thessalonians. I think it's five something. And so it's really important. The word says in John 7, or Matthew 7 says, know, know their fruit. So if somebody comes in you don't know, they, they need to be silent because we don't know them. So that's real important that you understand. If you go to a church and they don't know who you are, you're out of order if you move out in the gifts, in the assembly. <laughs> Hallelujah. Or... You can come up to the microphone, never shout it out in the audience. That is out of order. Never interrupt a message. The pastor is preaching a message. Those are out of order. And uh, God does every, says have everything done decently and in order. So you can come up and give the word you feel you have for the church to the pastor or to the person with the microphone, and they can decide whether it's God or not and judge it. Uh, that's okay. But you don't get up and just, you know, just speak it out. And they don't know who you are, but you shouldn't even do it if they know who you are. It's still out of order. You have to be careful that it, that it is that you feel like you get your value out of it or, you know, it's... Uh, drawing attention to yourself. It isn't about that. It's a drawing attention to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So I need to end here. I could go on and on. I got all these testimonies, but let's end. Just repeat after me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of my sins, and I ask your son Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior. If you prayed this prayer the first time or it's a rededication, there is a phone number to call right there, and there's somebody that wants to pray with you, and we have a gift for you. God bless We are a 501c3. All of your donations are tax deductible. The WordForWinners.com ministry believes that your tithe belongs to your local church. Your financial donations to this ministry are received as offerings to support spreading the gospel of grace throughout the world. Go directly to the web to place your donation. TheWordForWinners.com Become a Grace Revelation Builder 